Worcester Bosch boiler service. My name is Alan Hart and today I'm going to show you why you should have your boiler serviced and it's very very important that you have your boiler serviced each year. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. Always make sure that you use a gas safe registered engineer if you're going to work on boilers or somebody who is competent to work on boilers. In this video I'm going to show you why you should service it and then near the end of the video I'm going to cut a heat exchanger up and I'm going to show you the inside of the heat exchanger and show you where the baffles go and how they get stuck in, um, in the heat exchanger if you don't service them correctly. To remove the case there's a screw on this side and there's a screw on this side and then when we look underneath there's some screws up there at an angle they can be a little bit faffy sometimes especially when you're putting case back on um, and then there's one on this side as well and sometimes they just pop out which is a bit of a bit of a faff and that case will just pull forward and you can just remove the case We just see here, this is the condensate trap, and we can see that it's full. It's full of, um, I think it's like the stuff out of the heat exchanger. I'm not sure what that what that's called, but a little bit more on this boiler would actually stop working because it's nearly blocked. It's nearly fully blocked. Sorry about the really bad quality video here. But it's, it's really hard to get in so we're just looking at the top of the heat exchanger where the electrodes are I don't know if you can see there there's like a red a red part of it and the burner seal has failed on this if you can see that red there that's the flame is actually coming through or the heat is coming through and on the top of this boil it's actually melted some wires on so we can see there that the, the seal has actually, that's failed. What I'll do now is I'll show you, I'll show you a seal and I'll show you what they look like when they have failed. If you have a look up here now, that's the, that's the burner seal. So when you take the top, so you've took your, you've taken your fan out and you've taken the top off and this is, this is what it looks like. And um, what you've got, you've got a burner seal in there. Now the burner seal, it should look like that. Um, but often, often you find them, you sometimes find them like this one up here, um, but often you find them where they're nearly, they've nearly burnt through and, and they become really, they just pull them, pull them to bits. They're just really um, like brittle. So you need to, if you're a gas engineer, you need to make sure that you check these on a service. I would suggest that if you've got any long-term customers that you work with every year, after four or five years, even if it passes the fan test, my advice would be to offer to do a full stripped-down service and then change, change this seal. As you can see these, it's a lot more spongy and it and it'll be a proper seal then um, and as I say always just always check the top of the heat exchanger to make sure that that's to make sure that that's not leaking what you've got you've got your electrodes go down there and you and then you have your your seal but it just it, it just um, just wears out after a while they need to be serviced. Sometimes they'll still pass on fan pressures. Um, my, my advice, as I say, is strip them down, service them as much as you can. This is the um, condensate trap. And what happens with these, if you're looking there, if you can see, it's like a trap. So there's a pipe that goes down in the middle there. And on that particular one that I've just shown you, the, the 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 muck in the trap had started to build up 
and it had gone almost above the trap and once it goes above there it'll stop working and then it'll back up into the boiler and you, you obviously you don't want that to happen so you must must get your boiler serviced and obviously make sure that the make sure that it's all cleaned out and, and a good job's done and if you service them they'll last longer what I'll do now is I'll show you the inside of the heat exchanger because on this particular one I really struggled to get the baffles out because it had been left so long so what we'll do we'll have a look at that now so we've just got a 13 millimeter nut there to undo obviously disconnect all your leads and your wires off it and then there's a clip there on the left hand side if you pull that clip and then all you need to do then is just turn the fan towards you and the fan will just lift out and you just see there so we've got the fan out now and then once we take the top off we can get to the baffle so the first part of it is the burner we've removed the fan now just got to be careful on these the gas pipe this pipe here is just rubber so you just need to make sure that, that hasn't split and then we've just got your burner your burner comes out the top your burner normally comes out nice and easy you've then got a baffle and then you've got another baffle that goes down deep in there I'll just show you that now so if you can have a look down there the baffle the remaining baffle is right down inside the heat exchanger or heat engine as I like to call it I've, I always find these quite tricky to get out personally I don't think they had a great design myself there's a little screw on the top and you can lift the flap off I'll just show you that and and then what you do is you have this tool here so you have to buy this tool and then you can use this tool then to try and pull the baffle up now as you can see from mine there I don't know if you can see but it's it's actually all bent because the they are quite tricky to get out so on this tool one side of it goes on the 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 um the first baffle if you like so as i say you have your burner first and then you have this baffle so you put this into there and then you can lift that one out and then once you've got that baffle out you turn your tool around the other way and then you can lift that out if it's a bit tricky what you can do as well you can get a screwdriver onto the top of the heat exchanger and put it through one of these holes and try and prise it out like that and and normally you'll be able to get them out but sometimes they're an absolute nightmare so this is going to be a little bit tricky to show you and now this but you pull that up out of there and then your baffle will come out if if it comes out this one's been a bit tricky I had to loosen it off camera I'll show you what the baffle looks like now so this is the bottom baffle and what we've done we've got a tool we've tried to get a tool on there the best we can and then we've tried to pull it up now this is a slightly newer model where it's got a spring on and they're a little bit easier to get out but they're still they're still not easy to get out I'll just show you this one here and on this one um, this one was an absolute nightmare absolute nightmare to get out what I'll do shortly I'll show you the cut up section so I'm going to cut the heat exchanger in half so you can have a look what it's like inside but just to explain how these baffles work you've got your bottom bottom baffle there so that's the tricky one that you've got to get out and then you've got the next baffle there so you need to make sure that's in good condition as well and then you've got your burner 
and that goes in the top. And then what you have then, you have the heat coming out of the burner here and it goes down here and the baffle is to try and make it go into the heat exchanger. Um, and then once you've removed all these baffles for servicing, we then have this tool that you can buy from Worcester and obviously you stick that down, try and clean out the aluminium part of the heat exchanger uh, as good as possible. What we'll do now, we'll go over to the um, the heat exchanger and we'll cut that up and I'll, I'll show you what it's like inside. Right then guys, I've been asked to cut open a Worcester heat cell, heat exchanger. Um, because we've been having a lot of problems with these, um, what people call kebabbing. So I've just cut a little section out with grinder so you can have a look what it's like inside. So this is your waterways. So the top connection on this, you've got flow of your water and then also you've got flow of the water from the bottom and it goes round this heat exchanger. And that's the, the part, the outside part of the heat exchanger. So that's a like a I think it's like a I don't know if it's stainless steel I think it is. Let me just see there. And what we'll do now we'll just take the full side off so you can have a look. What it's like. We'll take all this outside part of the heat exchanger off. And then what we'll do shortly, I'll also cut the heat exchanger in half. So that's the outer, the outer shell of the heat exchanger. So hopefully you can understand there now how that works. So the water goes round, all the way round that outer shell. It's not really sealed to it either. So that's sometimes when these mix, when they're sludged up and hopefully you're better understand that better from that. If you have a look there, so you, <laughs> It's a bit mucky there, but um, if you have a look there, you've got your water comes in and goes round, all the way round up to the top. What we'll do now, I'll cut this, I'll cut it in half, and I'll show you what it's like inside, and the inside bit is where the gas part goes, so we'll do that now. Sorry that we're jumping all over with heat exchanger, it was a bit hard to hold the camera and do the grinder etc um, so I've got I've got a, a different heat exchanger here it's the same same type and what we've got we've got the flow goes in at the top here and then it goes round then um, that spiral like you've seen in previously and then it comes out on the bottom on this pipe here And just while we've got this off, I'll just show you when you've got your baffles in here. So the baffles would be in the top here. And then that's the bottom of it. So you can actually see, you can see straight through there. And then what I'll do now, we'll cut this in half, um, or I'll show you it cut in half. And then hopefully you'll, talk, you'll be able to totally understand how it works. But if you do have any questions on this heat exchanger, please ask them in the comments below. Also, uh, if you're a gas engineer, please add your opinion below, what you think of this heat exchanger and what you think of these boilers. So I've just cut the heat exchanger up now and what we'll do, we'll have a look inside. You see the outer shell there? So that's what the inside of the heat exchanger looks like. What I'll do now is I'll show you a video of somebody from Worcester Bosch actually taking out a heat exchanger. So they'll show you how to do that. I've also got some outtakes and bits and bats on end as well. So yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, please add some comments below. And yeah. Thank you. Which cell you've got, if you've got a Mark 1, 2 cell, it has a little bracket that you lift off, so you have to take the nut off and lift the bracket off. What you do there is put the nut back on, 
On this one, a Mark III and above, it's like a, a retained. It swivels out. So it swivels out, you shove it round, so it's now clamping the plate down. Makes your life easier for when you're taking the fan out and putting it back. Mm -hmm. So now you can disconnect your fan, fan swings out, and out it comes. Why well, you've still got that in place, disconnect your electrodes. Because if you leave, take that nut off, what's then happening is that plate's moving about. When you're pulling on them electrodes, the electrodes will start moving. Internally. So that's the way to do it. Disconnect the rest of your wiring while, you, while you've got your fan out. Fan out. So now you can actually we can actually take that out without disturbing old else. We can leave that as is. And then under here, you've got a retaining bolt. And it is a retaining bolt, this it there's no seal on it. It's literally holding the cell in place. So there's no seal on that or out like that. Disconnect your floor. And then you're going to disconnect your flue from down here. How easy that is. So you don't actually take the flue out? Hmm? No, you leave the flue in place. Disconnect your overheat stack. Now then in the book, it actually tells you to take that off there. Don't. It's the only time I say don't read the instruction book. Leave that in place. Because if you take that off, what happens then the return part starts moving. And you've got to get that joint apart. When you're trying to prise it up, it will actually move the return part. That's a retaining clip that holds the return in place. Okay. So all you do then, get your screwdriver underneath there, pop it up. Now in real life, that is not going to do that that easily, but it will come out. And can you see how that's damaged there? All the time. At the end, because I've taken it out loads of times, but at the end of the day, if you damage that, the new cell comes with that sump on. So it doesn't matter if you damage it. Then on the back, oh, it's popped out. And all you do is that. Let's you sell out. When you're putting it back in, you've got this little bracket here, which goes into there. Slots it and down. Yeah, so you've got to lift it up and drop it down. If you don't get it in there, believe you me, when you come to fire it up, if you haven't got it in there, you'll know about it. Because it'll make a hell of a racket. Do you want to put it back? Yeah. Mike Mackey working on a Worcester. So you sort of got to get that in. So, because you're going to lift it right up. And get it in that bracket at the back. You see there, we go. so you lift it up like that's it. Pull it forward, you're not going to do. That's it. And when you come to put it back, the weight of the cell will, will drop it onto the return part. It will literally drop it straight on. And that won't be hard work to do. You put new oiling on, grease it up, and it will, the weight. But in reality, taking it out is not going to be as easy as... Just there, that was the float.